Jim Wildfire One. You are listening and watching Here's the New Sexy Entertainment, the podcast. This is episode 112, and we got month of movies, month of movies. And uh, you might not recognize this beautiful gentleman right next to me here, but you'll know his voice. Hey there, my name's Ice Cold, and I've been well, I've been here what once before with the uh, Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump, which was a movie, which was yeah, a it movie, was a great movie. Great movie. Great movie. <laughs> but tonight we're talking about what? Spaceballs, my space man. Spaceballs. Well, the Spaceballs. Yeah, we're talking about Spaceballs. In the month of movies, <laughs> I think we got one more month of movies episode left, and it's the one I missed last week. So, Spaceballs. I watched it last night because we planned on doing the podcast today. Let's see. Spaceballs came out when? What year did Spaceballs come out? 1987. 1987. Okay. That is a long time ago. Oh, like, yeah. I don't even remember how old. I was a youngster in 1980. I was like a baby. I wasn't even born in 87. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Now I feel old. But anyway. So, you got you got Spaceballs 1987, Mel, a Mel Brooks movie. And this is, you know, Mel Brooks could do no wrong at this time. Like, he was <laughs> comedic genius, great writer. And, of course, if Mel Brooks is going to spoof anything at that time, he's going to pick probably two of the biggest franchises you could ever think of. Star Wars and Star Trek. Mm -hmm. And he named the movie Spaceballs. Before we get into that, like, what do you remember mostly of Spaceballs? I, uh, personally, I remember uh, the big fight scene towards the end, but the one that comes to mind as soon as I think Spaceballs was the desert scene. Oh, oh yeah, we, 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 there's a story with that, too, because <laughs> oh, we were yeah. talking earlier, and out of nowhere I get a message from Ice Cold, and he says, We ain't found shit! And I was just thinking about that fucking scene, because that scene always made me laugh, and it's that scene actually, I remember being a kid watching it, and my dad laughing his ass off. Like, mm -hmm. Sophista laughed his ass off at that scene, and I didn't get it. Because I was a kid, you know, I was an itty-bitty little guy. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, ha-ha, that's funny. My dad's laughing, I'm laughing. As an adult watching it, they're doing that little, that little, like, every, the they're little combing comb. the desert. Yeah, they're combing they're the desert. They're combing the desert, look for something. <laughs> Sir, you think we're being too literal? No, we're following orders. Love it, <laughs> love it. So, that is, yeah, the, one of the best scenes in the movie. There's a, that whole movie is a best scene, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, let's start off with the actors, okay? You have one of my personal favorite actors, Rick Moranis. Like, Rick Moranis is, can, is an amazing actor. Uh, you have uh, John Candy, a fucking god of comedy. John Candy was like, you know, another guy who could do no wrong. He acted one way, but he acted good. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, you have Mel Brooks. And I'm just naming the three names. And this is what's funny. On the cover of the movie, it just, despite, like, who's the hero, it just has those three characters. Mm-hmm. And two of them are villains, and then John Candy's just sitting there like, 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 I'm looking at him like, why the fuck is he with the villains? I never thought of it now that you, uh, you know, bring that up. But those were the three names that were big at the time. Mm -hmm. You know? John Candy, Rick Moranis, and Mel Brooks. Those were the big the big names. Those were, honestly, I think those were the people they thought were going to have them come in to see the movie. Oh, but well, if, now, now you can probably add another big name to that list, too. Give us some of the names of the actors and who they play. All right, so there's uh, Bill Pullman that played Lone Star. Where would, where, would we know, yeah. where, would, where would we know Bill Pullman now? Independence Day. Independence Day, thank you. He was the frickin' president. Uh, he also did Battle of the Sexes a few years ago. Yeah. Bill, Bill Pullman's a good actor. He really yeah. is. Well, I, I remember him by Torchwood, but that's a whole different topic. You said Torchwood? <laughs> yeah. He was, was Oswald. Oh, no shit, you're right. He was. I completely <laughs> forgot about that. So, okay, and then the, and then the female lead. Princess Daphne Festival. Zuniga. Daphne Zuniga. Daphne Zuniga, who was, uh, you know, like, Honestly, kind of one of those those actresses that was kind of like you know she was in a few shows, right? We we mentioned that earlier yeah. off the podcast. Yeah, she she was also in One Tree Hill. Yeah, so I mean uh, that's it, the only other place I know her besides. 
really pretty woman, really beautiful oh, woman too. Hell like, yeah. She looked amazing in the movie. I, I couldn't get over her. like, I kept going to myself like, man, I'd fuck her now. God, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'd say it's that thing. She was born in 1962. She's gorgeous. And to, today, she's like, dear God. She's gorgeous. Like even you know, even in the in the Spaceballs movie, she was gorgeous. Oh and, hell yeah. Um, and of course, you know, let's see. Who do I feel like we're missing some? We're missing some people here. Oh, uh, John Hurt's in it. Oh well, yeah. You know, what's, what's what, who John Hurt play? John Hurt. That was his character's name. Oh god, uh, he's the one that had the uh, alien rip out of his. Okay, stomach. that's what I was thinking. You were thinking, yeah. So, yeah, he was literally playing himself. Spoofing oh, the movie, no, the movie again. Aliens. Yeah, <laughs> we'll get to that scene. Oh my God, we'll get to that scene. <laughs> Mel Brooks, you're a fucking genius. I'm serious. Like I wish I could have thought of this shit like beforehand. <laughs> like I said, it feels like we're missing somebody. Michael Winslow. Michael Winslow, of course, the original the man of a you know, thousand, thousand voices. voices, a thousand sounds. I've lost the creeps, the sweeps, and the pistol of the creeps, or whatever the beeps, the, the sweeps, creeps, and the creeps. Sweeps, sweeps. Yeah, and he's like, there's like, the what, and the what, and the what? And I love that scene. <laughs> <laughs> now, okay, we'll go ahead and start, we'll start talking about the, yeah, movie. the opening scene where the, 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 the words are going off the screen, up the screen, much like Star Wars. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like chapter 11, or it says, you know, <laughs> and that's hilarious. And it's like, much unbeknownst to them, but beknownst to us, and, and stuff like that. I thought that was hilarious. There's little winks at the audience, like, ha ha, we're making fun of Star mm-hmm. Wars. Oh, oh, buckle in, you're going to enjoy this shit. And then, and then as it goes up, the little thing fades in. I don't know if you remember this, but it fades in. It says, if you can read this, you don't need glasses. Yeah. <laughs> Joke's on you. I can read it, and I still need glasses. But it was, it was very funny. Because it was like it was a little further up the screen, right? It wasn't real far, but it was. And then from there, it goes to the ship, the giant fucking ship. And of course, that is a big ass, that's a big ass poke. It's the first Star Wars because the first Star Destroyer it went by the ship, and this ship is just like you hear that music. It's like a very jazzy kind of music as it go it goes by the ship. It just doesn't seem like it's gonna stop. And then finally, it stops. You see the like the thrusters on the ship, and in the back it says "We break for no one." It's a fucking bumper sticker. That's great. The basic premise is that the Spaceballs planet has no air. They have squandered their air. They have no air. They fucked up the the uh, President Scroob, played by. And it's funny. It's funny because every name like is something like like the, one of the guys named the Colonel on the ship is called Colonel Sanders. Yeah. <laughs> I never got that until I watched it recently. I was like. Present screw played by none other by uh, other but Joy, like uh, Mel Brooks, you know, um, is trying. They're basically trying to steal it from other planets and keep it on the down low so no one will know. The first scene on this sh- on the like the helm of the ship or the the, you know. Yeah, the helm. Yeah, the helm of the ship where where they introduce Rick Moranis's character, dark <laughs> helmet. <laughs> and what does it look like? A penis. Exactly, because he's the biggest dick there. There's well, this whole movie is just dicks and asses, and well, I was just telling Ice Cold how, how like immature it is, but it's that's the beauty. That's Mel yeah, Brooks' joke. That's how Mick Mel Brooks does things. Rick Moranis' character, dark dark helmet, walks down like this long ass area, and everyone's scared of him, like overreacting, doing these like reaction faces, like like the faces are all scared and their eyes are all big. Yeah. You know, kind of like, oh no, he's he, he's a badass. He's gonna fuck us up. And finally, he gets to this close up of of Dark Helmet, and you hear him breathing, kind of like you know the, uh, yeah, but but, but then like you know, like it sounds like he's just horribly having a hard time breathing. So he puts the helmet up and he goes, I can barely breathe in this thing, or something <laughs> along those lines. <laughs> it's just. It just breaks character. It's fucking great. And the best thing about Dark Helmet, I don't know if you noticed this. I know a lot of people did, but I don't know if you remember this or not. But every time he put his helmet on, he spoke with like a British, like a kind of like a British oh twang. Oh my god! Like, yes, he does. And, and, and it's like he's he's like he's like being an evil character, and it's fucking great. Like he's like trying to hide who truly he truly is. And that first scene is iconic for a few reasons. Because one, you first get to meet. Colonel Sanders, and and Lord Helmet, and uh, the, and there's the scene where you get to see him use his power, 
and and uh, one of the one of the guys literally went over his helmet. I'm using air quotes for those of you who can't see. And as in, told someone who he wasn't supposed to tell something before, before Lord Helmet. And he goes, "No, no, not that, not that." And then Lord Helmet goes, it puts his helmet on. He says, "Yes, that." <laughs> and he's got that fucking X. <laughs> and he's and we're thinking like, oh, he's gonna get choked because the guy's doing this. He's he's mm-hmm. on his throat. And he aims the fucking ring at the dude's testicles and, like, shoots him right in the dick. <laughs> and it just looks so painful. Well, yeah, you imagine having a laser, which not only does it look cool, it also has a lot of fucking heat scientifically. It's going, I mean, granted, it will, you know, laser your balls off. But at least it will, you know, cauterize it. Well, it'll cauterize it, and it, I'm, I guarantee you that guy had no genital hair. Oh, <laughs> Thanks, Lord. Does that, does that uh, mean that he went Brazilian? <laughs> oh, yeah, he went Brazilian before it was cool. Thanks, Dark Helmet. <laughs> That's the first scene. Do you remember this is the scene afterwards, the, the marriage scene? No. Vespa getting married to Prince to Valium. Prince Valium. <laughs> Which I still, to this day, I find his name fucking hilarious. Well, considering his character, it's fucking hilarious. Well, well, uh, his, uh, the guy that plays his character, um, oh, God, uh, Jay very f- Bullock. Very familiar face, yeah. Which I I find funny that he was uh, supposed to get married to Prin- Princess Vespa, because mm-hmm. um, nowadays he's in a bunch of uh, interesting pictures. What do you mean by interesting less. pictures? Uh, he was in uh, you know Bold and Beautiful. <laughs> okay. He was in an episode of Glee. Um. Oh wow, he was actually in uh, Ned's Declassified as well. Okay. Yeah. Honestly, except for the hair, the wig they had him wearing, the, I've seen him act in other movies and shows. He's actually a very attractive uh, fella. He's actually a very, very, uh, he's a very yeah. handsome fella. And <laughs> so it's, it was interesting. So the wig was hilarious. He was wearing this, like, very, like, Prince Valiant, you know, like, uh, default NPC kind of, like, char- yeah, princey yeah. character hair. And it was, it was fucking ridiculous. But it, Valium, which... His his character was very sleepy. Every time you saw him, he was really tired. He was either taking a nap or, you know, half awake and yawning. And they they definitely chose like a really funny character to go with that name. Oh yeah. So the 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 wedding scene it's it's literally what her and her dad. She obviously Vespa Princess Vespa doesn't want to marry Prince Valiant. Oh, who would? <laughs> not no yeah not at all like she does she is not into this guy. Um, so. Long story short, with that scene, they she literally, yeah, she literally, literally blow. They, she blows that popsicle stand. We were missing one of the actri- actresses. We were missing Dot Matrix. Do you remember who played oh, Dot Matrix? Joan Rivers. Joan Rivers. That's who I was trying to think of. Joan yeah. Rivers played Dot Matrix. <laughs> so her then Dot Matrix is her her equivalent of C three PO. Yeah. So. Literally, literally, they put Joan Rivers in a suit. I'm assuming it could have been another actress in a suit with like, with like well, skates Joan on. Joan Rivers was just the voice. Oh, um, oh, okay. Yep, Lorraine uh, Jansen was the person that was in the suit. suit. Okay, that's cool. Well, it was very well choreographed. Oh, the two it of them, was because I believed it was her in a suit. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> but they literally put this gal in a suit and and she was in skates. So you move forward. She 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 gets out of there. She gets in this like really cool looking space car kind of little, thing. Little cor- yeah, yeah space like a little cor- corvette. Yeah, space corvette. Yeah. So and she takes off and and flies away, and uh, they uh, I think it goes to the scene where where uh, Colonel Sanders and Dark Helmet realize that because they're they're going there to steal the air no matter what. I think they had a plan mm-hmm. to they had a plan to. Uh, Kidnap the princess to begin with. She just made it easy. Yeah, kidnap the princess to get the <laughs> to get the codes to open up the air I, air bubble. Yeah, the air bubble, but they called it some air shield or something like that. Yeah, something fancy for the. 80s. So she's in space, and uh, I, you know I don't even know how the hell the king knew that the space balls were after her. And now that you mention it, I they they probably sent them a. Uh, a message or something i don't remember i don't know because all of a sudden they're, they're contacting lone star about two minutes before that call happens pizza the hut oh god pizza 
And Pizza Hut is played by no other than, come on, I know you know this, Dom uh, DeLuise. Dom DeLuise. Dom Del- there were a lot of names in this movie that were big at the time that, like, no one, I don't think some people didn't even realize Dom DeLuise did this. His bodyguard's like a robot, and I always remember that twitch he has. He's like, you know what I'm talking about? Like, he's talking and he mm-hmm. does this, and, and they do that robot sound, and when he does it, so... It's a, it's a, it, 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 basically, the story is is that they owe Pizza the Hut a shit ton of money. A million space bucks. Well, I wonder where they got that idea from. Yeah. Originally, it was 100,000 space bucks, but Pizza the Hut fucked them. <laughs> but one of my favorite parts of that is, like, his uh, his assistant starts eating him. And he's like, oh, you're delicious. <laughs> he's, he's eating a piece of fucking pepperoni. And he's just telling... He's like, you're delicious. Then we that there there's your plot device right there. They need money. King Roland? King yeah. Roland? I, some, I think it might have been Roland. Correct us if we're wrong, nerds. Uh but he called and he's like, hey guys, you got you gotta save my daughter. And da 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 and he starts kind of bragging about that little space corvette, like he got it from his cousin, and mm-hmm. then they tell him, Okay, well it's gonna cost you, you know, because it's space you're you're going we're we're going up against space balls and they don't really like us to begin with, so it's gonna be one million space bucks. <laughs> so, he just, he's, you know, the King Roland's like, fuck, I don't know if I, I don't want to do that. And, yeah. and then, then John Candy's character, of course, uh, who plays Barf. His name, his character's name is Barf. And he's a Mog. Part man, mog. part dog. Mog. I'm my own best friend. <laughs> I love when he tells him that. But anyway, so they agree, and d- despite whatever, and then the king tells him, if you can, save the car. <laughs> like, no fucks given. Save the car. And there's a lot of, like, because it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's planet Dru- Druidia. Like, they're Dru, they're yeah. Druish. There's a lot of Jew jokes. They're Druids, or. Yeah, there are a lot of Jew jokes. And at one point, I think he, I think even Lone Star says, that's all I need. Or a Dru, a Druish princess. Yeah. And then, of course, Barf, uh, John Candy goes, funny. She doesn't look Druish, and I thought it was Druish. fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So, but that that's later on. Anyway, see that big ass, uh, big ass star destroyer kind of ship, and mm-hmm. it's basically got that little car in a, a uh, tractor beam, more or less. They called it something else. And uh, I can't remember what they called it. Another iconic scene coming up. <laughs> they decide they they uh, Lone Star and, and Barf are literally arguing like Barf wants to leave he's he's ready to go he's like no nah, we're not well, doing this yeah he's, this is he's the opposite of you know a star wars of chewy yeah. of chewy yeah he's supposed to be chewbacca he's like how are we gonna do it we're never gonna pass that he's like yeah we are no we're not yeah we are and so they go back and forth and he goes we're gonna jam their sensors or the radar jam we're the radar jam the yeah radar and in the true mel brooks fashion <laughs> he shoots a <laughs> He shoots a fucking bottle of jam at the radar, and I, I they had to have slowed this down because they mimicked it in space. So you see this giant bottle of jam go into like this this <clears throat> radar dish, and it just yeah, breaks radar and gets everywhere, and it, everything's kind of floating. It's kind of cool looking, and this is where Michael Winslow comes in. <clears throat> I'm trying. I, oh, yeah, actually, before that, the whole asshole scene happened. The helmet tells him to fire at that li- at that little Corvette ship, right? And uh, mm-hmm. they're firing. He goes, he goes, fire across her nose. He goes, I told you to fire Sorry, across sir, the I'm nose. Doing my best. Not up it. And this guy like look, turns around, puts his helmet up, and looks hey. and he's cross-eyed, like like super cross-eyed. And he goes, who made that man a gunner? And he goes, all right, another here, I did. I and it's another dude with a cross-eyed. He goes. He says, who are you? Yeah, that's my that's cousin. My cousin. Ma- major asshole. asshole How many assholes do I got on board this ship? Yo! <laughs> like, and, half and the, the fuck. Entire, the entire bridge. No, it was, it was like, it was like, it was like three people didn't raise their hands. I knew I was surrounded by assholes. Group <laughs> Moran is his character. Water, I knew it. I was sorry. Yeah. <laughs> he gets into character. Keep firing, assholes. So and then the jams ha- the jamming sequence happens, and uh, you got Michael Lin- Winslow Linslow, Winslow. Um, he's doing his thing. I lost the the beeps, the sweeps, and the creeps, and he, he, he just 
Oh, it's it's funny. The what? The what? And the what? It you was know, the leaps. Yeah, and he makes a noise, and he does another noise, and he's just in the. Ma- yeah. And then, of course, at that point, like they're in the middle of a dialogue between those three, and then a bunch of jam goes down the screen, and he says, "We appear to be jammed." Jam. <laughs> and Dark Helmet does like this thing on the screen where he wipes it off and licks it, and he goes, yeah. "Raspberry." And only one man would would dare give me raspberry. Lone Star. Oh, so good. It's and it, so they they rescue the princess. And then another iconic scene coming up. Ludicrous speed. <laughs> they save the princess. It's obvious that the princess and the captain uh, uh, Lone Star don't get along. From from the very beginning, there's like they're arguing. The yeah, they yeah. don't see what each other looks like. They, they're just assuming they look like a certain way, and they're just arguing back and forth. You know, like you know, and and she wouldn't leave All without her luggage. Exactly, and she wouldn't leave without her luggage. And poor John Candy had to carry her fucking luggage on the ship. <laughs> <laughs> they do this this jump jet sequence where they do these like special uh, thrusters appear and they go into like what what looks like light speed from straight out of. Uh, straight out of star wars and so here you go you got you got him going light speed and there and uh colonel sanders looks at dark helmet and goes okay we're going to, we're going straight to light speed and he goes no dark helmet goes no light speed's too slow we need to go to ludicrous speed and he goes that's too fast we can't do that the ship can't handle it he basically orders him to do it you're gonna do ludicrous mm-hmm. speed so he's so everyone buckles in. So he buckles in. He's, everyone fasten your seatbelts. Close the five ring circus. And he's on the radio, like just telling everyone <laughs> to do this, all this ridiculous shit. Dark helmet grabs the 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 I don't know, like the com or whatever, and he just goes, "Screw this, ludicrous speed, go!" <laughs> no, no, no. Be- before before he says that though, uh, San- Colonel Sanders says, "Sir, shouldn't you buckle up?" Then he grabs it and says, Buckle, Buckle this. this! Yes! You know, they go right past, you know, our heroes, right past Lone Star. <laughs> well, they go, they went plaid! They went to plaid! It was so great. They just, they overshot him. They overshot him. And I think they said, like, by a week and a half, is what they yeah. said. <laughs> so, but they overshot him, and it goes, it goes like, to Rick Moranis is holding on to, like, the, the, the ship, and he's, He's like straight up like supermaning it, holding on because they're going so fast. They, he goes, cut the, they cut the power. All of a sudden, he just shoots right forward. He shoots big full, ass dent on goes it. Goes into like goes into like this panel, and his big ass den in his penis helmet. And he's like, "Did we stop? Uh, goes, yes, sir. Uh, that's good." If you got and he goes. He goes. How about we take a five minute break? Okay, sir. And he goes, "Smoke if you got him," and passes and he out. Goes straight up pass. Great, great scene, and then of course it goes to Lone Star and, and that group, where they're in the uh, they're in their sh- that. The, the funny thing is, is their sh- Lone Star ship is a Winnebago with wings. <laughs> I, I mean, I should have mentioned this it's, earlier. It's, it's an old rust bucket. It's an okay. old Winnebago with wings, and it outran, it outran, it outran this big ass ship. Anyway, so they ran out of gas. Doing that 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 hyper jet thing, that jump jet thing. Mm-hmm. So they land on this desert planet. It is exactly what you think it is. They land on a desert planet. Basically, they have to they have to go. The go. They have an argument over her her luggage. And uh, end up passing out water H two O water. And then of course John Candy's got his tongue hanging out in his character, and uh, you know uh, dot matrix is oil. And of course President the princess. Is saying room service. I mean, you can't have sand without sand people. You know, if you're gonna talk about do Star Star Wars spoof, mm-hmm. and I, th- these characters didn't even really have like they're sand people in or Jawas in in the Star Wars lore, but these these guys didn't have like really a a, a name. I don't know where that they pass out here. Ding ding, ding 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 ding. Ding, ding. And it's a bunch of guys, like little, little, little guys, like Jawa size. Uh, if they're called dinks, yeah, that's how they spoke too. Everything they said was ding, ding, ding. ding, 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 ding so ding, ding. they're singing and they're going along and they see this and they they give them water and oil and everything they need, and they're bringing them. So they 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 bring them to shelter, right? Mm-hmm. And in comes Mel Brooks' second character, yogurt. 
<laughs> and they do this very Wizard of Ozzy when they bring him up. <laughs> They're walking down. With the big curtain. Yeah. Well, no, there was no curtain. He just remember oh, he walks no. out of a he walks out of the statue. But he yeah uh, yeah that's. But they they're they're scared walking up because there's fire coming out. They're making it very, very much like the Wizard of Oz, and um, and uh, he, who dares enter the 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 great and power whatever the great and the no, uh, the everlasting know it all yogurt, mm-hmm. and they go, yogurt you're in and he he walks out you heard of me, you know he's got he's got who a, hasn't heard of yogurt the yogurt the wise. Yogurt, yogurt the magnificent, powerful. yeah. And he goes, please, "No, please, I'm, don't just, make I'm just plain yogurt." Just, I'm just plain yogurt, and it's hilarious, especially the point where they're like, oh, "What are you doing here? Merchandising, merchandising." <laughs> and I, I didn't notice this. Watch this again, okay? You remember the comic book? He said, "Space," because he's like, Sp-, he's showing them all the stuff they're merchandising. It's space. We put the name, the product name on everything. One of the things he shows the the comic book, right? It is a Transformers comic book. <laughs> I shit you not. That is Optimus Prime on the fucking cover. I even <laughs> paused it to look at it. And I'm like... Oh, I... I'm like, that is hilarious. Because they even... Later on, they mention Transformers. And he's merchandising, merchandising, you know. And he's talking about the space balls. The, the, and if, if, you, if you notice, if you ever notice, you ever look at, like, YouTube and people talk about space balls, it's always space balls the blank and this is where that comes from space balls the magazine or the the comic book space balls the mu the the cereal space balls the flamethrower and it was just beautiful he's like the kids love this and it even says on the flamethrower a kid's toy or something like that because <laughs> what kid wouldn't want to you know, I, sit on fire i would love a flamethrower at 10 years old oh you oh you can buy a small little flamethrower i can actually shoot fire for kids Good to know. If I ever have children. <laughs> oh, Here you go, little gosh. wild. Go go be an arsonist. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, so we get to this scene and, and yogurt is they're they're talking about like, you know, like I it he mentioned this or he mentions this earlier. I just got I got ahead of myself because I got excited. But he mentions like I he's like, You're yes, I am the I, I have the almighty power power and one of them goes, The force? He says, No! The Schwartz and he shows this fucking ring with a big S on it in like, I don't know, diamonds or some sort of gem. Yeah. And it's all like shiny and beautiful. Like they over they overplayed it. So we get a little backstory. We got a little backstory in the actual, uh, a little earlier with Vespa and uh, uh, Lone Star. Lone Star mm-hmm. showed Vespa his, his medallion. You remember this was much earlier in the desert before they passed out. Yeah, and he explains that he explains that he uh, he's an orphan. He was brought up by a bunch of mutes, and and um, and the, he has this thing in like a weird language that he no one can translate. He's brought it to all the wise men, and it's this medallion that's around his neck. Well, anyway, he sees he sees yogurt, and he tries to get him to uh, to translate it to translate it to decipher it. And the yogurt looks at it and goes, ha, ha, ha. And He's like, oh, you can read it. He goes, no, I'm clearing no, my throat. no, I'm just clearing my throat out. <laughs> so after that, that point, they start doing their Schwartz training. Like, and there's no reason for this. There's just, it's just, there's just no reason. Like, it doesn't, like, it just, and as a kid, as a kid watching this, I just accepted it. I think a lot of us did. Like, there was no reason. Like, why is he training him in the Schwartz? Like, why? He's, he never, they never mentioned anything about him being like a, dis, a disciple or anything like that. He just. Yeah, he, they just go ahead and straight up do it. Yeah, it's just plot device at this point. So, so he, he's doing this thing. He's pointing at this giant statue that we mentioned earlier. And he's, he's like, how am I supposed to live that giant statue with this little ring? The, the statue's lifting. And here comes fucking Barf. Oh, boss, how are you doing that? That's super cool. And he distracts him and it lands on his foot. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Ah! Ah! And then, like fucking yogurt's like, give me the, give me the ring, and he does some magic words that are fucking ridiculous. And, and the, the foot is just straight up. Yeah, and, and the, he gets it off, and his foot's flat, and he's walking around like it's like it's a flipper flat. It's so big, <laughs> and he's like, ah, you know, like John Candy's just ah, screaming like bloody murder. And he's looking back at Lone Star like, fuck you, why'd you do this to me? And walks off. I'll let you tell the next part because the next, you know, the next, the next big part. 
about the part where they're combing the desert, right? So they comb desert, and just like in Star Wars, they're looking for traces of whatever. Yeah. Uh, specifically, you know, in Star Wars, look for droids, and here they're looking. They're looking for Princess Vespa Vespa. or anything I can hit towards her. Yeah. Sure. They were told by President Scroob to comb, comb the desert. desert. So, in, in Spaceballs fashion, they have several men with actual freaking combs. Oversized combs. The desert. Do you find anything yet? No, sir. No, sir. Go over to one other set, you know, two people using small, yeah, smaller combs. Do you find anything yet? No, sir. And they come over to the last little one. Uh, they actually describe it in, you know, stuff as a afro comb. Or, or, or a perm comb, I guess. A you perm can call comb, it. whatever. Um, but, um, did you, did you find anything yet? We ain't found shit. <laughs> it's now, fucking now, hilarious. Now, fun fact. Wow. Could you think of, just think of that guy's face that said, we ain't found shit. Could you place him into another, let's say, sci-fi type of uh, story. I couldn't till like 30 minutes ago. Till so about 30 minutes ago. And well, let's going. tell this story. You blew my mind when you said this. Cause oh, yeah. So I was telling like, him, I was telling him, I was like, I wonder if that is one of the singer, the guy, the lead singer, like the singers that did the Spaceballs theme. It, it's not. They, it's they not. Completely, it's no. not. But I'm glad we found this because go, go for it. So, go so, for so it. The, the guy that, you know, says we ain't found shit is Tim, I think it was Tim Russ. And he you guys don't know that a, name, you will. He is a big Trekkie. He appeared on Star Trek Voyager as Torvok. Tuvok. No, none other than Tuvok, Tuvok himself. Yes. The Vulcan. And, and probably one of my favorite else. characters from, from Voyager. Here's something else. Do you know who he screen tested before he played as Tuvok? Think, uh, I think it was Generations. Uh, went by a lieutenant in the first season. Then by the time it ended up as lieutenant commander. Are you talking about? Are you talking about Worf? Nope. LaForge. Oh, he was going to be LaForge. He, he, he was going to be LaForge, but it didn't work out, so he landed as Tuvok. Okay. Well, he did an amazing Tuvok. The voice, oh, yeah, the actor's amazing. And again, the, again, this was this was. One show spoofing two shows, and one of them happened to be Star Trek. And yeah, later yeah. on, this this guy that says we ain't found is shit, a, a, he he is a tome of Vulcan knowledge. Later on, this guy that said we ain't found shit in, in a sci-fi spoof of two different sci-fi shows. Well, probably more than that, a lot more than that, but oh, it, yeah. mostly two different sci-fi shows ends up being one of the most like well-known Vulcans. Oh hell yeah. No, no, no. Wild space right here. Like, oh my god, you think someone gave him a big ass when he, when he told me I had a boner, okay? I can see that thing from where you're sitting. It was beautiful. <laughs> like I he said that and it was like it was like all it was like the world shifted, like everything was in place, like like all the planets were aligned. Like everything just made sense. And it's so fucking awesome that that guy played the fella who says, we ain't found shit. Oh, when I found that, I was like, no, there's no way you'll get a fucking kick out of this. So, some nerd facts for you guys. That's fucking mm -hmm. amazing. And he found that. He, f I, 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 did, I can't take credit for that. That was fucking am I, I wish I knew that. I did. And so we all <laughs> learned. So if you guys didn't know that, we all learned something today. All of us. Oh, hell yeah. And those of you who did, you get a golf clap. Because, goddamn. Whew. They're combing the desert. Fast forward, they accidentally find uh, Yogurt's lair, you want to say, and mm -hmm. uh, and there's a big Y on it. Like He's like, it, it, the Dark Helmet says something along the lines of, I felt a presence since I ha that I haven't felt in no, you know, Star Wars fashion. Yeah. And uh, literally, literally, they're like, they, they uh, was it, I think Colonel Sanders dusts off and says, look, sir, a Y. <laughs> he goes, Yogurts! I hate yogurt, even with strawberries. He's all they're probably in there, and he's and uh, uh, Colonel Sanders goes, "Well, let's go in and get him." He says, "No, I can't. I can't go in there." And he goes, "There's an upside. He's he got the upside. I got the downside." He's talking about there's two <laughs> sides to every Schwartz, you know, almost like the the dark side and the, the light side of the. Yeah, force. he's got the better side. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? 
<laughs> Even to this day, I hear that scene, and I'm like, that explains nothing! Oh. And, and what, what's another name for, you know, a particular part of the body? I've never heard it called a Schwartz before. I have back in freaking middle school. Okay, well, I, went I, mean, to, I went to private middle school. I always so. thought Schwartz were like, were like, uh, like a genital warts thing. I've never heard of Schwartz being called like a dick. <laughs> But <laughs> this movie makes you believe it. So, um, so what he does is what he do, they they basically come up with a plan to get Princess Vespa to get out of there. So what he what, what does he do? He change, he makes himself look like her father, right? Mm-hmm. I think one of the best parts of that scene was like he'll go. She walks out and he's like, "Yes, I'm your father. Would I lie?" And he does this Would eye I roll. Lie? He does this eye roll like you know like when I it's it's just how he did it. So she goes to him and like that that robot follows her, the C three PO wannabe uh, dot mm-hmm. matrix follows her and is like no don't go to him and she gets captured. But like, I know that I know that they the dink dink guys tell him like they got the prince and they're like ding 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 that just it's a bunch of them doing that and it I mean it's literally like in the the the, the cadence of they captured the princess ding 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 and it's like what are they saying? Yogurt gives him gas. And a fortune cookie. Are you wondering what it? You wondering what it was about? Yeah, I'm trying, trying to. I'll, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. The the fortune cookie is basically the end of the movie. He gives them some gas, and they get to go. And they're gonna go save the princess. Because I know there's some other scenes that we skipped that like uh, like the the beaming down of you know of, of um, President Scrooge when they when they beamed him down and his head was on backwards. Why didn't yeah, someone tell me my ass was this big? You <laughs> know. And so, and then there's like that little wink, like, "Oh, now we're making fun of Star Trek." Ha ha ha! <laughs> so, you know, they do it a few times. Uh, they go to save the princess. They go to Spaceball City. Uh, actually, I think it was a little bit before the Desert City, where we we kind of skipped ahead of this. Uh, the this is now, where they're all crowded around, and they actually pull out a VHS. Oh Spaceball. yes, yes, yes. Oh now, now, no, no. When no, we just no, missed now, it. Now is then. then well, is now. The- Okay, let's talk about that real quick. Let's because we gotta talk. That, I'm glad you mentioned that because I did want to bring it up. The <laughs> there, there's a part where they're trying to find where the ship went mm-hmm. because they they overshot him and lost him. So he goes. Uh, Colonel Sanders tells one of the guys, "Bring up, bring up uh, Spaceballs the movie." And he goes through these VHS things, and he find and, and they're looking through, it and it's like all of I don't know if you noticed, but these were all of like Mel Brooks's movies. Oh yeah, and. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, uh, Dark Helmet's talking to Colonel Sanders. He's like, "How is that? How how can how's we be? How is that possible when we're making the movie now?" And he goes, "Well, there's been breakthroughs in VHS. In, in those of you who are probably too old, too young to know what a VHS is, it's a cassette tape that you watch the movie on in a VCR. And if you don't know what a VCR is, I'm not explaining. Oh, okay, it's a DVD yeah. before DVDs DVD players were created. You have the internet. I'm not explaining further." They're, they they watch Spaceballs the movie as it's being made and they're fast forwarding and they get to the point where they do the ludicrous speed scene and and, and fucking you can tell like Rick Moranis is getting yeah, Dark Helmet's getting embarrassed he's like skip through this uh, pass all this yeah, skip yeah. All. and they go through all of it and they get to the point where they're at now now and you can see him on the screen you can see him look at they look back and they you know both of them look back and look at the camera and then look back at the at the screen and there's a there's a really cool like who's on first kind of joke there. I'm not even gonna try and mimic it because I I'll, I'll just I, fuck I, it up. I, I won't either. It's but gonna, it was. It's gonna butcher. But it. it starts out with like, um, what are we looking at? We're looking at now. We're looking at now. And he goes, well, what do you mean now? He says, what you're looking at is us in the now. He says, well, what happened to then? Well, we skipped it. Would win just now. <laughs> I'm just gonna. Go, I'm gonna leave breaks. it at that. It just breaks. And it goes on and on. And one of the things I like about this movie is it breaks the fourth wall so much. Oh, yes, it does. But that's again tr- true Mel Brooks fashion. So they go to Spaceball City, and then of course, of course, they they land. They they land their little Winnebago, the piece of shit, in a little area. And, like, and then one of one of the Spaceball guards goes like. See that sign? No parking! You know? <laughs> and here, here comes Barf, and he, he just flips one of them off, like, making a face, and then, like, oh, we're gonna kick your ass! And they go in there, and they get their ass kicked, and they, in a true... They, they end up in their suits. Yeah, they end up in their, their suits, much like Star Wars. Star, yeah. And, um, 
they they go about and what's funny is I found like the the way to get into the like the way to unlock doors. You see, you remember that? It's a giant key. Oh yeah. <laughs> they just push it against the wall. Finally get to this detention center, and they and of course you got you got Vespa singing. Nobody knows the trouble I the see. Trouble I in that real deep yeah. voice. Barf even goes, huh? She's a bass. <laughs> She's like, what are you doing here? And did take off their fucking you know spoofing star wars again it's us you know so they start they take off and yeah they get caught but they get caught by the guys that that uh, that they beat up and he goes mm-hmm. those are the guys that took our uniforms and the other guys go the other guy goes and beat the shit out of us too <laughs> 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 they do this uh daring escape scene and I think there's a scene where they capture their stunt doubles. I think, is that the, is it at this yeah, point? Yeah, yeah, they, they capture their stunt Yeah, and then, again, we were talking about breaking the fourth wall. <laughs> it's yeah. their stunt doubles. It's, he goes, you idiots! You captured their stunt doubles! And it's like, even Princess Vespa's character is just a dude with like, like, a, with a, mu- like a Hitler mustache. And he's got, he's, he's smoking like a cigar and none of them really look like Exception of the, it look like the actual character. yeah, with the exception of the dot character, the robot. So it goes from there. They get the princess back, but oh, we forgot one of the vital scenes. I can't believe I forgot this. It was before they got the princess. They got the damn code for the air shield. Oh God! Before they got the princess, they got the code for the air shield. They called King Roland. They basically threatened to give Princess Vespa a nose job. And he's like, "What do you mean? She got a nose job for her sweet 16th birthday?" And they go, "No, we're gonna. You don't understand. It's much worse than that. We're, we're gonna, gonna give her her old, nose. her old nose, and it's like this witch's fucking like." And she screams and passes out. They act like they're gonna do it, and that's when he gives them the number. Well, the the code, the code. They go, no, don't do it. I'll, I'll give you the number. And he goes one. And there, well, and the others, the other ones are. Everyone else is. Re- they're repeating it like because they're writing it down like two. One, 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 two, two, yeah. two. Three, four, five. five. And, 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 and oh. One, two, three, four, five. That's stupid. You know, an idiot could break an idiot. that. That sounds like something an idiot would put on his luggage. A little later, the, yeah. the yeah, President Scrooge walks in and says, you know, and asks him for the... Well, what was the combination? One, one two, two, three, three five. four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, that's amazing. I got the same thing on my luggage. So funny. <laughs> and then, like, they get this look on their face. So They're like... <laughs> Sorry, we're we're bouncing around, but it, it it's just there's so much so much good shit to this movie that like you got it. We got to mention it all. You got to go. You yeah. got to go back to it. They're basically at Druidia, right? They're they're mm-hmm. they basically go Druidia, and <laughs> Vespa. I, I'm assuming Vespa tells Lone Star what's going to happen. You know, they got yeah. the they got the air bubble open. How are they going to get the damn the damn air out? Well, <laughs> you you brought up that Transformers thing earlier. And this is where that comes in. They, they the sh- transform into the a ship. giant maid with the vacuum. Yeah, what he said. A giant maid with a vacuum. And they called it Mega Maid. Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis yeah, complete. Metamorphosis. Spaceball 1 is now doom, doom, doom. And there's a guy playing like these these drums. Doom, 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 and doom. Mega Maid. And this is like all fucking overdramatic. And, then that, and while it's transforming, Barf goes, that's not just a spaceship. And his ear goes up. That's a transformer, and it's just how he did it. It's a transformer. It's a transformer. Which, which again goes back to the whole Optimus Prime thing. That um, mm-hmm. I'm, and they're sitting there like, how? Okay, we gotta, we gotta make a plan. We gotta, and as they're making, as they're talking to about each other, you know, to each other in the ship, and we go into Mega Maid, and they're actually starting to suck the the air out, <laughs> and uh, all three of them, yeah, the suck, suck, suck. 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 It's so great. All the atmosphere is being sucked from the planet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's one part where King Roland's dying, and he's overacting. He's goodbye, Vespa. Goodbye, Vespa. Yeah, and he he just kind of passes out, probably from lack of oxygen, probably as in definitely probably. from lack of oxygen. I, I, I would I would I'd like to wager that he did. Yeah, I, I'm not really sure. I'm not big I'm, on science. I'm not I, I'm not I'm not a doctor or anything, but uh, yeah, the things that Yo- yogurt gave him gave Lone Star was the ring. Mm-hmm. And uh, so he's like, you can use your Schwartz training. So he uses the Schwartz training to turn this giant on button to reverse. All, all of a sudden, in in the the ship, they're like, all the trees go. Yeah, everything's coming and, back, and and in the ship, they're like, what the fuck? What happened? What's going on? I, it's Mega Maid, sir. She's gone from suck to blow. Oh my god. 
oh my, yeah, it's so hilarious. Versus Mega Maid, and they go through its ear to get inside it because they want itself to, they want to destroy it because you know mm-hmm. if they just turn it off, they can do it again. So they go in, and this is where my second Star Trek reference comes in. They find where this the room is for the for the self destruct button, which of course every ship has a self destruct button. Oh yeah. You know you got to have one of those. So he's uh he's going through and he finds one of the guards and he does this neck pinch, and he's and the guy. It's, the, like, it's like oh no, it's a little bit lower than that. Well the guard. Oh, okay. Well the guard goes, what the hell do you think you're doing? He says uh the Vulcan neck pinch. He says no, you got to go a little lower, like right there. <laughs> he does. It, he's, like, he's like, okay. Yeah, that's right. So, so he gets he gets everything down like he's gonna get ready to push the button. In comes the dark helmet, and it, it, it there's that that scene where he's like, before we before you die, I must tell you. If I remember correctly, it's like I'm your father's brother's nephew's cousin's former roommate. Yeah, so. something like that. I can't remember. Absolutely it nothing. Which is what you're about to become. They have they do this thing where like the lightsabers are the rings. And they got them, like, on their dicks. They literally do that, and, and Dark, Dark Helmet looks at him and says, Yogurt has taught you well. I can see your Schwartz is as big as mine. <laughs> Dark Helmet basically cons him into shaking his hand, like, oh, I tell you what, I, I don't like to do a fair fight, but if I must, I must. Put her there. And he takes the ring from Lone Star, and then he starts mocking him. In that fucking accent, he starts mocking him. I, <laughs> What's with you, man? And he's just going on, and he, he's like, like he's going to give it That's the oldest trick in the Yeah. Place. And he's, like, going to give it back to him, and he throws it down a vent. And he's like, ah, oh, you're a fucking idiot, just talking shit. And Lone Star thinks that, like, he can't do anything. And all of a sudden you hear Yogurt's voice, you know, use the Schwartz. And he's like, I don't, I lost the ring. He says, the Schwartz was in you. The ring is bumpkiss. I got that out of a Cracker Jack box. He used the, he used the Schwartz to get the, the shaving mirror. And and the whole time, Dark, uh, Dark Helmet's getting ready to shoot him in the dick with a laser uh-huh. ray. So... He uses the, the, the mirror to reflect the ray. And I don't know if it shot hit I don't know if it shot Dark Helmet in the dick or not. I can't remember. I, I don't recall if it does. His or not. head hit the, the self destruct button. So it goes from that to them getting out of there. They're they're getting ready to leave the ship because it, you know, they got so many minutes to leave before explosion. I think it was like a minute forty five, I think, that That's they right. had uh, to get out of there. And there there's this there's this <laughs> again, there's this iconic scene where everyone abandoned ship. The the president Dark Helmet and uh, Colonel and Sanders Colonel Sanders. are trying Which to find... I got, I got a fun tidbit about Colonel Sanders. Um, oh, okay. So early on, yeah, we're jumping back again. Before they do ludicrous speed, uh, Dark Helmet looks up to the... Try, tries to square up to Colonel Sanders. What are you, Colonel Sanders? Chicken? Yep. Yeah, he's like, prepare a ship for ludicrous <laughs> speed! For ludicrous speed! He's like, <laughs> that, that is definitely a worthwhile mention. It was good. But uh, so they're trying at this point. They're trying. Yeah. They're trying to find an escape pod, and everyone like is getting an escape pod. But those three, they they're getting. And it's funny because like one of the guys is a pizza guy, and he gets in, and he's like, "Fuck you!" He flips, flips one of them off. So finally, uh, if I remember correctly, it's like a bear from the circus. Yeah. There's it's... one of the ones that cracks me up is the bearded lady. And, oh yeah. And <clears throat> the bearded lady, she got he. Uh, I think it was. I think it was a uh, helmet that came up to her. He says. Who the hell are you? He says, I'm the bearded lady. What are you? One of the freaks? And bumps them off with her boobs and gets in and takes off. So it yeah. blows up. It blows up. They get uh, The heroes get out on time. <laughs> and then they go to planet Druidia. But before that, we'll, we'll, I don't know if we're skipping ahead or, or whatever, but before that, there's this scene where uh, you see the head of the ship and the arm of the ship holding like what's, what's part of the, the vacuum floating through space. And it mm-hmm. lands on a planet. And this is so fucking great. The way that I, I gotta give Mo Brooks a fucking clop on that one. He, <laughs> he the way they do this is it and if you if you didn't know better, the head of that of that thing looks like the Statue of Liberty. Oh and, yeah. And yeah. if you and, and if you guys don't I know, know what you're about to reference. <laughs> yeah, and you guys don't know where I'm going with this, you watch the movie. The uh, all of a sudden you see two riders on on horses come up to it. They're apes, like Planet of the Apes. And they're looking through these binoculars, and they go, what is that? And one of them goes, space balls. And then the other one goes, oh, shit, there goes the planet. <laughs> <laughs> so it goes to Lone Star to the diner, <clears throat> and uh, this is one of your one of the scenes where you were talking about earlier uh, that we said we'd get to. 
So yeah. they go there and they're they're ordering from this gal. You can hear this these guys telling the story, and one of those guys is that <clears throat> that actor from Alien. What did you say his name was? John Hurt. And he um, more or less they they start talking and one of them ordered I think the fish and the other one ordered the special. Okay, John Hurt's character starts like like freaking out like he did in the movie. You know, uh, and he's like coughing shit up, and food's coming out of his mouth, and he gets on, and you see his chest going, and it cuts to cuts to the two heroes, and they go, "What did he order? What did he order?" And she's like, "She had, he had the special. I'm changing my order to the fish or the soup. It was the soup. I'm changing my yeah. order to the soup." And like, and then like, Lucifer's like, "Yeah, that's a good call." And it goes back to John Hurt, who's like, his oh, chest no, is like, not again. he goes, "Oh no, not again." And his chest is like. Pfft. And it, it, the, the fucking chest burster comes out, and then all of a sudden this it music just gets up and dances. It's oh, right out of the fucking right. Looney Tunes, right out of the Looney Tunes. He puts this oh, like it, hat right, on, and I can't. Hat. And he starts singing, oh, "Hello my baby, hello my honey, hello my right time gal," <laughs> and he's and he's like dancing right past the fucking the fucking heroes, and they're looking like that look on their face. Do you remember the look on their face? I probably would have reacted the same way, and they just uh, the, he kicks the door open. The alien does, and yeah, it and it goes out, and then they and then they get stand up and go check please, done, never eaten there again, fuck that. <laughs> Another great reference, Mel Brooks. You are a fucking genius, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so they're in the ship, and and Barb's pissed off because he didn't get to eat, and they could have stayed for the wedding. Mel Star goes, you know what? This I got this this fortune cookie from yogurt. And he opens it, and out of nowhere, this crazy magic yeah, shit comes out. A hologram. Up. A hologram, a yogurt, and he, they're talking. And he goes, I know, I know, I, I, I read, I can, I can tell you what your your thing said. It's a royal birth Yeah, it's a royal birth certificate. You're a prince. You're a certified prince. And what cracks me up is when he says that, like, Lone Star goes, I'm a prince. And he, he's like, he's acting like almost, oh, I'm almost want to say like, like, um, like he's Rocky. I'm a prince. Yeah. Yeah, we find out he's a prince, so they're going to go get ready to basically crash the wedding, more or less, right? <laughs> yep. Uh, so, I'll let you tell this part. Dad, or King Roland, Vespa, and Valium are all talking through it. And it's it's back and forth between them and the minister. Can you shut up for yeah. one minute <laughs> so I can finish he's, this? He's trying to get him married, and she goes, she goes, I don't know if I love him. He's all, this isn't about love, this is a wedding. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, so, so they, they, you all three would say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Don't be, don't be sorry. sorry, be quiet. Yeah, don't I'm be sorry, sorry, be quiet. And, I'll know, of course, in the true, true normal fashion back in that day, you're going to hear me say it a lot. But I object. Here comes, yeah, here comes Lone Star kicking the door open with some, like, some, like, princely clothing that he got out yeah, of fucking where nowhere. Where did he get that from? Well, even Barf was dressed like, and he had medals and shit on his yeah. chest. Like I, I, at this point, I'm like, did did you guys just have like that stashed? Was it like, did you did you think maybe one day I might be a prince, so I'm just gonna wear this? Did they stop and buy it on the way? Like, what happened? And basically, he proposes to her on the spot, and she she looks at Valiant or Valium, and she's like, I gotta think about it, and then she pushes him aside. Yes, so they get married, and that's pretty much it. Like the last part of it's some flying off into space, and it says, "May the Schwartz be with you," and and some magic shit. And then we've seen the movie. What would you say? How, like, how much nostalgia do you have? Like, what is, what's your rating for this out of one out of ten? Uh, one out of ten nerd boners, I'd say definitely ten. Yeah, you know what? I, I it was one of my first. Uh, you said you watched I, it before Star Wars. I watched it before I watched Star Wars. Wow. So. Wow. <laughs> That's cool, though. Me, um, me being a young buck, yeah, looking I, back on I, I watched it over 100 times, I enjoyed it. I can't time. give it a 10. I can't. I love it. I do. I love this movie. <laughs> Almost like, I guess I grew up. Like, I'm like, there's so many dick ass and head and sex jokes and poop. Well, and, what do you expect for you know, I know, bro. but I, and that's what I loved it. I'd, I'd give it I'd, a 9. A 9. That's just me being nitpicky, but it's still yeah. there. Um, and we were talking earlier today, we were like, because... I keep hearing, like, for years, I've been like, oh, there's going to be a Spaceball sequel. Someone says that. Yeah, and... now now with Disney owning Star Wars. That's what we were Wars. saying. Now that Disney owns Star Wars, I doubt they're going to let go of anyone f- spoof their franchise. Disney, well, you know what, Disney, you might be a family-friendly company, but you seriously are. In... I'm not going to say anything. Because <laughs> they'll probably they'll send be... out they'll send out They'll send out their Donald Duck ninjas and shit. Or where, where are they going to do me? Yuck me up? They're going to yuck you up? 
Yeah, I like that. No, I wish I said I wish I said goofy ninjas now because <laughs> you're gonna yuck, yuck, yuck me up. <laughs> yuck, yuck, you fucked up now, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, any other special podcasts coming up in the future? Any special, you know, nerds new sexy videos on YouTube for the next few months? Oh, uh, other than you know the the playthrough of of. Uh, a way out. I don't think we we got too much going on just yet. I, I love that. <laughs> we might come up with something. I've got a few plans. Stay nerdy. Uh, stay sexy. Always.